Welcome champions and welcome to another episode of Think Like a Champion. We're dedicating this podcast to helping you win in every way and enjoy every day. And I want to get right into the content. We're talking about our relationship with money. Everything in life boils down to our relationships, our relationship with God, our relationship with ourselves, our relationship with each other, our relationship with food, our relationship with money. And what I've noticed is that the degree to which you place value upon yourself is usually the degree that you place value upon money. So if you, if you respect yourself and love yourself and treat yourself uh, kindly, then you'll, you'll respect your money, you'll treat your money kindly. It'll, and it'll treat you back kindly as well because it is a relationship. So how you, how you look at it and how you treat yourself is going to spill over into how you look at yourself, how you treat yourself is going to spill over into how you look at and treat everything else in your life, every other relationship with, in your life. If you have a bad relationship with yourself, you will end up having an abusive relationship with food, for example. You will use it to make you happy. You will use it when you're sad. You will use it as a drug. And uh, we could do that with anything, really. And God wants us to be so satisfied in our soul and so content inside that nothing else has power to control us, or control our decisions or control uh, and influence whether we're going to be happy and whether we're going to be blessed and successful. So it, there's really something to be said about how we view ourselves which ends up being how we view the relationships in our lives. And there's also something to be said about what you, what you view God as, how you view God, what you think about God. The, most, the number one most important thing in your life is what do you believe about God when things go bad? It's not just what do you believe about God, because in good times you can believe God's good. And in bad times you might think, God's not so good, or where is God when I need him, or why isn't God answering my prayer, or why isn't God solving my problem, or why, aren't, you know, why don't I have this, or why don't I have that? I think that the most important thing about ourselves is how we respond and what we believe about God and how we treat our relationship with him in the tough times. Do we believe he's good even in the tough times? Because I do believe that. I do believe he's good in the tough times. I bring tough times upon myself. Life brings tough times upon me. Other people bring tough times on me. The devil tries to put tough times on me. God never is the author of any of those tough times, but he's the author of helping me become tough because tough times don't last, but tough people do. And God will help God, I know God will strengthen me in the tough times. I know God will give me wisdom in the tough times. I know God will make a way where there is no way in the tough times. I know that God will still be with me in the tough times. So your belief about God really is going to affect your belief about money as well. So I want us to really think about that. What we believe about ourselves and what we believe about God has a lot to do, if not most to do, it has a lot to do with our relationship with money. So if you believe in a generous, good God, you're going to expect more and you're going to be able to do more and you're going to be able to, to go big in life when it comes to finances. Boy, this, one, this concept is really important because if you see God as stingy, then you will close your heart and mind to expecting great things to happen in your life or you might, if you, if you believe God is stingy, you might reject God in a sense. You're not rejecting the real God, but you're rejecting the God that you believe in, the stingy God. You, you reject that God and you become greedy and you cheat and steal and lie to get ahead in life. So what I'm trying to say is I reject God. I'm an atheist when it comes to believing in a stingy God. I'm an atheist. I do not believe a stingy God exists. You see, an atheist is somebody that doesn't believe God exists. I'm an atheist when it comes to a stingy God. I'm an atheist when it comes to a fear-based God. I'm an atheist when it comes to a God who's mad at us. I'm an atheist when it comes to thinking that God might be withholding from me. I'm, I don't believe in that God. That is not a God I believe in. 
I don't believe in a small God. I believe that if man can think up and conjure up ideas to fly to the moon, to go to Mars, to invent all manners of, of inventions and uh, d disease healing medicines and treatments, if, man is that, if man's mind is that capable of being uh, that great and doing such great things, how much more the creator of the human mind, which is our heavenly father, we call God and heavenly father. So, um, you know, if you really have a right view of God, like I have based my whole belief in God on this one verse, I believe all the verses in the Bible, but I, my foundation of what I believe about God is built upon this one thing in Psalm 27, verse 13, where David said, I would have despaired unless I believed that I would see the goodness of God in the land of the living. I would have despaired unless I believed I would see the goodness of God in the land of the living. That, that scripture just has continually blessed me and continually held me and continually calmed me and continually stabilized me. And there's so many others, but that one is a real true foundation of what I believe and what I expect every day. And I want you to expect it every day. And the Bible says in Romans chapter eight, verse 32, he who did not withhold his only son why would he withhold anything else? He will freely give you all things. He will freely give you all things. First Corinthians six, verse 10 through 16 says that, that God richly supplies us with all things to enjoy. He wants you to enjoy your life and your relationship with money has a lot to do with it. And one of the things we really declared and really drilled home last podcast was that we have to understand all of the currencies that we possess. You know, I, I looked up this definition of currency. You know, the legal definition of currency is the money which passes at a fixed value from hand to hand. The money that passes at a fixed value from hand to hand. And this is such a small way of thinking because what currency really is, is it's a medium of exchange for goods and services. It's a medium of exchange. Currency is a form of exchange. The word currency comes from the Latin word curren or currer, which means to run or to flow. So the real definition of currency is to run or to flow. So wealth is not defined by having a lot of money. Wealth is defined by understanding how life flows and understanding all of the currencies that are at your disposal and how to leverage them. In John chapter 16, verse 24, Jesus said one of the currencies that we have is until now, he said, you have asked nothing in my name. Ask and you will receive that your joy would be made full. I mean, here in this verse, here in this verse pops and bursts the religious bubbles that have controlled most people's minds for centuries. Just in this one verse, it obliterates most people's view of God. Because what do most people say? Most of what religion says is that you, you shouldn't ask for much, you shouldn't do for much, you shouldn't go to God uh, to, to expect too much, and you, and boy, happiness is not something worth going after. And that's unspiritual. And it's unspiritual to ask God for physical things or material things. These are some of the belief systems people have about God. And yet in this one verse, Jesus obliterates that. He said, until now you've asked nothing in my name. He's not condoning asking for nothing. He actually says, ask and you will receive that your joy may be made full. So not only does he tell us we need to stop believing that we shouldn't ask God for things, he also tells us we should ask, and then he tells us we will receive, and then he tells us 
his ultimate goal for us is to have fullness of joy. When we ask for anything, we'll have fullness of joy. In verse 23, if you go back one verse, Jesus said, in that day you will ask me nothing, but most assuredly I say to you, whatever you ask the Father in my name, he will give to you. He will give to you. This tells us a lot about God. He wants you to have whatever you ask for. And I'm, obviously, there are people that are watching right now or listening and you'll say, well, that, that's just something that you can abuse and that's just something that you shouldn't tell people because Christians will just ask for all sorts of things then. Well, you're right that Christians will start asking for things when they know that God is one, the one who's, who gave us the idea to ask him for things. <laughs> and then number two is when you, uh, when you start asking for things, we, we see that God will give them. And religion wants to tell you that God's not generous in that way. Religion will tell you you always have wrong motives. Religion will tell you don't ask for things. And yet God tells us to do so. Jesus tells us to do so. And he says in his name, and he says he will give it to us. And he doesn't set a limit here. He doesn't say only ask for a few things. Only ask for your daily, absolute, bare minimum essentials. God is so much bigger than that. And we have to, really, we have to smash the idols of a small God. And we have to smash the idolatry of worshiping a cheap God, a stingy God. You know, that's idolatry. Whenever you worship an aspect of God that isn't an accurate aspect of him, it's idolatry. You're worshiping a different God. You're idolizing some other belief and you're idolizing some other God other than the true God. This is idolatry when you, when you believe, when you bow to the belief that God's stingy, when there is overwhelming evidence everywhere you look in the Bible at how generous God is and everywhere you look in nature and everywhere you look at what God created, you see nothing but absolute generosity and joy-filled celebratory giving. That's, that's the God that we believe in. That's the God who created the world. That's the God who created you. We have to understand that currency is not limited to money, that we have a medium of exchange through the power of prayer, as we see in John 16, 24, 23, and 24. And we see that currency is a current. It's constantly flowing. It's flowing in and it's flowing out. That's what currency does. It flows into our lives and it flows from our lives. We can either control how it flows out or we can just allow it to spill out. But God wants us to control the flow of how it comes in by expecting bigger, thinking bigger, asking bigger, dreaming bigger, planning bigger, and then control the flow of it out from us by giving bigger, by investing bigger, by sharing bigger. There's a flow. John 7, 38, Jesus said, the one who believes in me, as the scripture said, from his innermost being shall flow rivers of living water. And this he spoke of the Holy Spirit. So this is another form of currency. The Holy Spirit is a form of currency. He runs and flows in our lives and he brings overflow in our life. Prioritizing God's kingdom is a form of currency. Remember, we talked about this. Matthew 6, seek first the kingdom of God and all these things will be added to you. Putting God's kingdom first opens you up to all these things being added to you. Idolatry is when we, when we try to add them to ourselves because we don't believe that God is generous enough to add them to us. Whew. So you get a hold of this and you will start ditching your small thinking and ditching your small expectations. We have to get rid of a small God. We have to let go of a small God, which allows us to let go of small expectations, small prayers, small opinions of yourself, small forms of generosity. Listen to this passage in 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 11 through 13, so you can understand 
the bigness of God and the bigness of what God wants you to expect in life. Paul says, dear, dear Corinthians, second Corinthians 6, 11 through 13 in the Message Bible. Dear, dear Corinthians, I can't tell you how much I long for you to enter this wide open, spacious life. We didn't fence you in. The smallness you feel comes from within you. Your lives aren't small. Look at what he says. Your lives aren't small, but you're just living them in a small way. I'm speaking to you as plainly as I can and with great affection. Open up your lives. Live openly and expansively. Wow, this is a powerful view of God and a powerful view of the kind of life God wants us to experience. He's, like, he's saying your, your lives aren't small, you're just living them in a small way because that's how you see yourself inside. But God wants you to live with wide open, spacious, expansive expectations, expansive generosity, expansive receptivity. We've got to be able to receive much and be able to give much. You know, I often believe that people mistake holiness and purity as some form of perfect living. And it's really not like that. I have a definition for purity that I believe will really help you in your walk with God and your relationship with money as well. That the purity that we need to purify and elevate our concept of God, the purity that we need is we need to get rid of or purify ourselves from destructive beliefs about God which he says leads to unreal gods or unreal idolatry. In other words, the purity that we need is we need to stop worshiping the God who is nervous in the storm, stop worshiping the God who can't sleep in the midst of the storm, worship the God who does sleep in the midst of the storm. Stop worshiping the God who sometimes says yes and sometimes says no and start worshiping the God who says yes to all the promises. He always says yes to all the promises of God. Stop worshiping the God who encourages you to stay close to the shore and, be, and take no risk in life, but instead worship the one who is telling you to launch out into the deep, step out in faith, open your heart, open your mind, ask big, think big, and trust that God will do bigger because the Bible says he is able to do exceeding abundantly. You know this verse, Ephesians 3.20. God is able to do exceeding abundantly above and beyond all that we can ask or think according to the power that works within us. In Genesis chapter 12, verse 1, God tells Abraham, Get out of your country, your limited vision, a life of containment. Get out of your country. It's a limited vision he's telling us to get rid of. It's a, 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 a life of containment and restriction is what he's telling us to get out of. Get out of your old patterns. Get out of the, the mindsets you grew up with. Get out of the mindsets that limit you. Get out of the mindsets that limit what God can do in your life. Get out of the mindsets that limit how much money can flow in your life. You know, the amount of money in your life does not determine the amount of greed in your life. There are people with no money who are very greedy people. And there are people with a lot of money who aren't greedy people. You see, it really has nothing to do with the amount of money. It has to do with what you believe about God, what you believe about yourself, and what you believe about why you're here on this earth, to be blessed or to be a blessing. I believe we're, God calls us to be blessed so that we can be a blessing. In fact, he goes on to tell, uh, he goes on to tell Abraham in verse two, he says that you shall be a blessing. You were made, I will bless you and you will be a blessing. God wants to bless you so that you can be a blessing. Blessing was God's idea. It's God's will. It's God's desire. We, got, we, we have to start making blessing our idea because it was God's idea first. We have to make being blessed and being a blessing, we have to make that a part of our way of thinking because that is God's way of thinking. And we have to believe that blessing was God's idea. When we tell people, God bless you, what do we mean? What do you mean when you tell somebody, God bless you? What do you expect when God says, I wanna bless you? What do you expect when somebody says, God bless you? 
I'm expecting his blessing. What are his blessings? All of his promises. What are his blessings? Peace and provision in the midst of the storm and in the midst of lack. Blessing, God blessing is God providing. God blessing is God giving answers. God blessing is God giving us wisdom. God blessing is God showing us a way when there is no way, giving us a way into what we can't get into and giving us a way out of what we can't get out of. That's a blessing. It's God's idea to bless you. You know, um, failure comes from the belief that you don't deserve good things to happen. Failure in life comes from a belief that you don't believe you deserve for good things to happen to you. Failure in life comes from believing that you're not meant to succeed. Failure in life comes from believing you're a chicken when God made you an eagle. Chickens just look down and peck against the ground, but eagles look up and eagles soar and eagles mount and eagles fly above the storms. Failure in life comes from the belief that you're a chicken rather than an eagle, from the belief that God is limited and that God only has one pizza to spread out and to share among all of his children, rather than realizing that God owns the pizza factory. God created the dough. God created the, the pepperonis. God created the cheese. God created all the ingredients. And he created a man with the idea to heat food up, to cook, to create meals, to create life, to create inventions. I mean, we have got to realize that God's, thinking is so much bigger than our thinking. And it's time we start thinking bigger. Um, Albert Einstein said, try not to become a man of success, rather become a man of value. And this is what God is saying to Abraham when he says, I will make you, a, I will make you great and I will make you a great nation. I'm gonna make you bigger than you are. Don't settle for how you grew up. I will bless you. Blessing was God's idea. Listen, if you believe in a stingy God, this, listen to what this will set in motion in your life. If you believe in a stingy God, you will stop expecting great things to happen in your life. You will not awaken the creative gene inside of you, the creative DNA inside of you. You you will not speak God's word because you think it's futile and it won't produce anything. You'll stop imagining what it would be like to be different because you can't possibly imagine that God could make your life better. Listen, the most important thing in this universe is salvation, receiving Jesus as your savior and Lord. The greatest success is having a relationship with God. But in this life, on this side of heaven, we have to realize that God is not just limited to saving our soul. He's unlimited to blessing our lives, blessing our families, blessing our homes, blessing our jobs, blessing our careers, blessing our businesses. We have to understand this about God because when you realize this, you'll start making better decisions when you realize your value, when you realize how good God is, when you realize all the currency that you actually have. You know, I'm out of time for today, but I, I wanna remind you that you were made for more. When Jabez was realized his name was pain in 2 Chronicles chapter four, in 1 Chronicles chapter four, he prayed and he said, God, bless me indeed and enlarge my territory and let your hand be with me and keep me from evil that I might not cause pain. You know, the next verse of that scripture says, and God granted his request and God granted his request. I want to ask you and I want to encourage you to just take a moment right now 
and ask this, ask this of God. Let's ask this of God together. Let me show you how to do this. Just pray this prayer right now. Just say, Lord, bless me indeed. So you got to get that in your vocabulary, your prayer vocabulary and your word vocabulary. Lord, bless me indeed, because, you know, the Bible says that God's no respecter of persons. What he did for somebody else, he will do for you. Jabez prayed, God, bless me indeed and enlarge my territory. Pray that God bless me indeed. Enlarge my influence. Pray that out loud. Enlarge my impact. Enlarge my influence. Thank you that your hand of your hand is upon me. Thank you that your hand of blessing is upon me. Your hand of protection is upon me. Your hand of provision is upon me. Your hand of power is upon me. Your hand of peace is upon me. And Lord, remove the borders in my life, the boundaries in my life, the limitations of my life. That's what pain is. Pain is when you come up against a limitation, whether it's something in your body or something in your mind. Ask God for a breakthrough from the thing or through the thing that is limiting you right now. The barrier, the wall, the ceiling that you can't break through. Ask God for that. Come on, let's pray that. Lord, give me a breakthrough. Let me break through my limitations today. Let me break through the barriers today. Let me break through. Give me a breakthrough from the things that have kept me small, thinking small, asking small, expecting small. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, Thank you, Heavenly Father, that you said you granted Jabez's request. So we thank you that you're granting our request today as we've agreed together in Jesus' name. Amen. Listen, I'm out of time for today. And thank you for joining me in today's podcast. Thank you for always connecting with me on Think Like a Champion. And also realize that if this is bringing you value, and I want to ask you to share it. I want to ask you to to take what you're hearing and take what you're watching and share it with somebody. Share it with your friends. Share it with your family. Share it with anybody you can think of. Share, share, share. God is all about sharing. And make sure to subscribe. Wherever you listen to podcasts, make sure to subscribe to the Gregory Dickow Think Like a Champion podcast. And listen, if you don't have a church that you are going to on a regular basis, come on out and visit us at Life Changers International Church. You'll find it on our website, lifechangerschurch.com. And take a moment and give today. You can also give at lifechangerschurch.com slash give. Take a moment and plant a good seed today. You know, we don't always need to know all the steps that we need to take to experience success, but we can take our next step. And the next step for you, the next step for me could be planting a seed. Would you plant a seed, sow a gift of any amount to help us get this message to so many other people. I want to thank you in advance. Go to lifechangerschurch.com slash give and make your donation there. Thanks again for joining me today. I'll see you next week on Think Like a Champion and I'll see you Sunday at lifechangerschurch.com. Love you guys. God bless.